Hey guys, welcome to the Parody Podcast Show hosted by me, Rachel Evans, aka the Human Barbie, Margot Robbie Barbie lookalike. Yay. So let's get into today's episode. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so I'm in my studio, as you can see, and I've got my fluffy Barbie limited edition pink jacket on because it's freezing in the UK. We are in early January and it's freezing. It's super, super cold. And blue sky, winter sunshine, love it. Uh, I just have to wear this jacket. It's a limited edition Barbie jacket with the Barbie logo inside. As you can see, it's one of those jackets that you get when you buy the Chevron sequin um, swimsuit that Margot Robbie wore in the Barbie movie. So it's official merch from Barbie, but it's not really something recognizable as a Barbie outfit. I'm only wearing it because it's freezing cold. And I've got my Valor Barbie movie hoodie on underneath my hoodie. Um, I've got my hair extensions in. I made a halo of it and I'll talk about hair today because I want to talk about aging and hair and I'm talking about beauty and makeup. Uh, we talked about skincare and fitness and a bit about the diet and gym training in the previous podcast. So the first half of this episode, we'll be talking about my hair, my lashes, my makeup, and then it will be how I look like Barbie, OMG, my Barbie body. Uh, and so I'll also, in the second half, do chit-chat about my gym workouts because I'm so excited to share with you. So stay tuned. And we're going to talk about my gym program and how good I'm doing on the gym uh, training program and the workouts I've had recently, how it feels, what I'm doing, lifting a little bit heavier now, what the diet is like, how that's affecting my mindset and making me a little bit forgetful, a little bit clumsy sometimes when you're tired. <laughs> Let me take a sip of my coffee. So let's get right into it. My makeup. I've got my natural lashes, which I'm growing. I hope that's a good angle because I just moved closer to my camera. Um, I'm doing a head and shoulder shot here, guys. Uh, I'm using Mineralized Makeup by MAC. I'm using e.l.f. Concealer in Medium Sand. I'm using Bronzer by Kiko Cosmetics. I'm using Mascara by L'Oreal. And I've got like 10 layers of mascara on to make it look fake because my lashes I'm growing them. So I want to talk about lashes and I want to talk about my, my hair. So I wear this halo extension. I stitched five rows of my hair extensions together, put them on a band, which you can see here. Well, actually, you can't see it. That's the great thing. And it stops my hair from feeling irritated or my head or my scalp from feeling irritated when I wear my clipping extensions. So I like plastic, fantastic Barbie, but I'm also going for the Margot Robbie Barbie aesthetic. So this is what I want to talk about today. As you guys know, the Barbie movie was a huge success. It hit the $1.4 billion mark. Um, so the Barbie movie is a billion dollar movie. Margot Robbie's just won. Uh, the Barbie movie's just won Best Picture at the Golden Globes. And it was a, a title, a category invented. So the Barbie movie has gone down in history for um, box up being a big box office hit, one of the top in the history of uh, cinematography. Uh, and theatrical releases now in the acting world, because, you know, guys, I'm an actress. I am an actress. In the world of Hollywood movies, uh, movies are a success based on their box office success. So it's hit the $1.4 billion at the box office, the Barbie movie. So guys, I'm so excited. I've just done an interview on the phone for a magazine and we're talking about my plastic, fantastic Barbie face and body and lifestyle from childhood to adulthood. And so, um, I came straight into the studio now to film this podcast, but I was talking in the interview just now that I did on the phone to a journalist, anti-aging over 35, because let's face it, guys, as soon as you hit 35, I don't think there's a huge difference bet between being over 35 or between 35 to 55 now. I'm in that category. Okay. Cause I'm 53 guys, but I definitely look and feel 10 years younger. In fact, I feel like I'm in my 20s and I'm anti-aging, doing it in style with the Barbie aesthetic on my face and hair and all everything I do from my hair extensions to my makeup to my lashes now, and my nails and my body, my Barbie body. Everything is plastic fantastic, but also with a human side, because don't forget, Barbie chose to become a human at the end of the Barbie movie. Yay! So... What I like to say to people is this, I'm aging in reverse. I'm not fighting the aging process. I'm enhancing the aging process. Does that make sense? So I will, when you fight the aging process, you don't live a healthy lifestyle. You know what I mean? And they mask 
the age, which is what my friend Steve told me, but you need to do it on a cellular level. So I've always been into fitness and health so that I don't just mask the aging process by doing surgery, non-surgical. I've had my boobs done under the knife, but my face is non-surgical. I haven't gone under the knife yet, but I have had a facelift using threads. I do that like once or twice a year. But anyway, we'll come to the surgery in another topic because that's not what this podcast is about. So I use my clip-in human hair extensions. I've made a halo out of it. If you Google Halo hair extensions, they're brilliant. This is not sponsored. It's a generic term. I know there's a brand called Halo, but you can go to other brands on the internet and get Halo cheap ones or human hair, which are more pricey. Or you can make your own, get a weft of hair, you stitch it, and then you put a band on it and you wear it um, instead of putting the clips on your scalp. Now, I've always been a fan of not using tape extensions and I clip the hair on. So this is the thing. I am Barbie 24-7, but I recommend... When you have your shower or bath or your cleansing ritual in the evening when you take off your hair and makeup, because basically, guys, I take my hair off at night. I don't sleep in my hair extensions. My hair's about up to here. Um, So you want to be fresh. You want to sleep and let your body and your skin cells from a cellular level, your skin and your hair and your lashes, you want them to relax and recuperate when you're asleep. So I'm not, I've never been a fan of having taping extensions that you sleep in. I've never been a fan of lash extensions that you sleep in. I always do the strip lashes, glue them on in the day, take them off last thing at night. And now I've got a new set of lashes that are growing so I only use mascara mascara yay and so I'm trying to do the Margot Robbie Barbie look on my eyes because she doesn't have massive thick caterpillar lashes now I know in my previous podcast if you look at it it's like I look a bit drag queen Barbie but I love the fake look and sometimes I go through phases where I want the most dramatic lashes on because I love the way they feel and make me feel all nice and cute and Barbie but my natural lashes When you first stop wearing your lashes and you go natural, you feel naked, 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 naked. And um, when you first take your strip lashes off and you go in the day, you feel exposed and vulnerable. But after a day or two, you get used to it. And I enjoy the fact I've got 24 hours a day now for my own natural lashes to grow rather than just in the evening when I go to sleep, they get eight hours because obviously I sleep eight hours on average. I need my sleep, guys. I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> um, and um, But now they're growing at a very accelerated rate because you can see I've only got my natural lashes on. It's funny because I don't use tape in hair extensions. I use clip-ins. And everything I do, I like to clean it off and uh, put it ready for the next morning and then get my hair and makeup done every morning. So people don't get to see me without my lashes or my hair in because I might have to do a podcast on it. So you guys don't get shocked. You're like, Oh my God, she looks different, but she looks good. Cause people tell me you look really good. You look better without your makeup on. I'm like, no, I don't think so. But thank you for the compliment. So, um, I do look very blonde lashes, baby face without my black mascara on. So one day I probably will do a podcast where you're going to get to see the before and after, but right now I'm in the studio, it's hair and makeup on set and that's it. We're filming. So Until then, I'm going to be Barbie with everything on that I need to look and feel Barbie. Plastic, fantastic, fabulous. Okay, so my hair extensions, we've touched on that. My lashes, we've touched on that. My skincare, you guys look at the previous podcast for my skincare. And the makeup I'm using is mineral makeup with SPF in it. And the SPF creams underneath and the CeraVe moisturizing cream with hyaluronic acid. And overnight, I do the retinol and the CeraVe and then the SPF. Because did you know, guys, that when you go to sleep and you're looking at your, you've got screen time, did you know that you can, your skin's aging because of the light from the screen? Yeah. So not only for the sun do you need to wear SPF, I wear SPF in bed, guys. I always did it and then I wasn't aware of it. It wasn't at the front of my consciousness that you get like you need to wear SPF to protect you from the glare from your iPhone screens when you're at bedtime and watching ASMR videos. So I'm glad that I do that. But yeah, I'm aging in reverse. So maybe that will be the subject is about aging in reverse and what I do, skin, hair and makeup, Barbie hair and makeup. Now, the Barbie hair doesn't always have to be long. It can be any hairstyle, to be honest. But I like big hair. Now, Barbie in the movie, played by Margot Robbie, I love the scenes where she's got tons of hair on. And in an interview, she said, we we use hundreds and hundreds of pieces of hair and wigs for each character. Even the background actors had big 
Barbie hair. And I think that, you know, they must have dented to the market in human hair extensions to put these wigs and hair extensions on all of the actors and the lead actors and the background actors who didn't even speak or the dancers. They all have big hair. So, yeah, can you imagine they're in hair and makeup for three to four hours every day just to get into character? How amazing is that? Now, I would have loved to have been one of those um, Barbies who just gets a few lines in the movie, pops up and speaks. But who knows in the second movie? I hope there will be one because apparently there isn't, but I hope there will be. Hopefully I'll get a, um, a cameo role in the movie. <coughs> Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie, here I am. I'm Bobby. <laughs> And I have fun at myself and I laugh at myself sometimes, guys, just so you, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. Because the world is in a state now in 2024 where you've got to enjoy the moment, enjoy everything you want to do and don't worry about what people think. So that's another thing is that I've just done an interview for a magazine and it's all about like from the age of seven onwards. And it took over an hour to do the interview. There's a plane in the sky. It looks like it's going really slow, but it's far away. Yeah, it's definitely moving. So let me take a bit of my coffee and cut this out. So guys want to know, people want to know, I think the public want to know, if they're curious about me, they want to know what my secrets are to look like Barbie. So I would say, obviously, do your skin, hair and makeup rituals. Do hair and makeup every day to get into the character of Barbie. But I am Barbie even when I sleep. I don't like looking at myself in the mirror when I've got no hair and makeup on because I just look boring and I look like I'm going to sleep. So it's right up until the last minute, I won't take my hair and makeup off. So what I do is I like to have an aesthetic that is in keeping with the Margot Robbie Barbie. So why am I now all of a sudden, why am I not wearing my fake lashes? Number one, Margot Robbie does not wear fake lashes. And when I'm doing my videos for Cameo and I'm like, hi, Barbie. Uh, and I'm wishing people happy birthday or I'm winding people up or just did a video on Cameo for an American bank to say, have a great time in your new office premises and they're celebrating the success of the Barbie movie because their assets are worth over a billion dollars. That's that's the the link, isn't it? The Barbie movie is a box office hit valued at $1.4 billion and counting. Um, and then this American bank has got over $1 billion in assets. So they feel like Barbie and this American bank have got a lot in common. Yay. So they booked me to do a video. And I'm just thinking, do you know what? Those fake lashes don't work for the Margot Robbie Barbie. So I have to go natural on my lashes. I'll never be natural on my lashes, guys. I look like I've just woken up. It's like, are you okay, girl? Do you need a coffee? Do you need a coffee? I need a coffee. So I'll always do my lashes, mascara, and like 10 layers. I might have to do a video because I think I coat about 10 layers of, no, maybe six or seven layers of mascara. I do the top like that, look down, then I do up. Then I wait for it to dry and I do it again and again and again. And I've got to separate the lashes and I've got to smud, take the smudges off. So it's actually more, to be natural takes a lot more time than doing fake because I can just put everything on. I don't have to blend it so much or I don't have to put the mascara and wait for it to dry. I just put the glue on over my mas one layer of mascara or two layers of mascara and that's it. It's good to go. So fake lashes are quicker than, for me than doing my natural lashes. Anyway, so I'm starting to warm up now. At some point I will take this coat off because it's not really, I don't think it photographs very well. It looks weird. I look like a Yeti. I look a bit weird. Shall I take the, the pink jacket off? What do you reckon? Let me just take it off, guys. I'm going to put my microphone down. This is, I'm back. I'll cut that out. Yes. So I've taken my pink Yeti jacket off. It's the Barbie limited edition jacket because it's now getting warm. See, I had to warm up, guys. Yay. So the hair and makeup, the mascara, the foundation. I use e.l.f. Cosmetics concealer and then I, d I put the MAC mineralized powder skin finish on it. But today I've got a little bit of e.l.f. Uh, what's it called? Uh, SPF and um, hyaluronic acid. I think it is a foundation. So it's all natural looking. And then I, my brows obviously have been tattooed on like in 2011. So they still just look amazing. Um, so that's what I do for my routine. And then what I do is I do my lips. I don't overline my lips too much because Steve, my bestie, who I'm sort of casually seeing now, he's like, don't overline your lips. They're big enough and maybe go smaller on your lips. Like I said in my, this interview that I've just done for the press in a, a magazine interview, I'm going for the Margot Robbie looky, uh, looky like, looky like, looky like. <laughs> I'm going for the Margot Robbie Barbie lookalike. So that means I've got to be more looking like Margot Robbie. And she looks amazing because she's just stood on the red carpet wearing Superstar Barbie pink. It's called Superstar Barbie. The Barbie doll Superstar Barbie wore a pink dress with like, um, not like a feather boa, but it's like a, a, a tulle um, boa around her arms. 
And she stood on the red carpet and they won Best Picture. Yay, Barbie won Best Picture. I think I mentioned that earlier. So Margot Robbie looked so Barbie beautiful on the red carpet and her makeup looks amazing. So she's very natural. She's got a beautiful smile. And her signature for Margot Robbie is the smile. When you look at Margot Robbie in the Barbie movie and she's very serious, you think, oh, that scene is so harsh. But when you see her on the red carpet, she's glowing. And sometimes I said that to my friends. I said, you know, the Hollywood movies, they do a grainy kind of finish to the edit or they use film. They might shoot digital or film. I think it's film. I'm sure it's film. But um, what they do is, I've got something in my eye, guys. So um, they make some of the Barbie scenes look rough. Her face looks rough. It's like, oh, God. Like I'm thinking they didn't put concealer on her face because I'm looking at all of the aesthetics as I'm watching the movie. I've seen it three or four times and I've got it on Sky now. So I saw it cinematic cinematographically. Okay, I saw it in, in the movie theatres. In the movie theatre, I saw it three or four times. But basically, I've got it on Sky and I learned the scenes. I've got the script like you, I've showed you in a previous podcast that's here in my office. And I study it at night and I rehearse the scenes. And when I look at the dialogue in the Barbie movie, that's another subject we touch on another podcast. I've done it already. So check out my podcast on the Barbie movie from last year. I look at the scenes. I'm like, wow, so beautifully written. Anyway, let, I digress. So Margot Robbie, her makeup is to die for. She looks amazing. She's a real life Barbie. But I love the fact that she doesn't always look perfect in the Barbie movie. And they did sort of, I think, under enhance some of the scenes when Barbie was crying to make her look more forlorn, to make her look more in pain and embarrassed, you know. But the scenes where she's rollerblading, her face was lit, obviously, with natural light. And you can see some shadows on her face. And I don't think they did any massive edits on it because even in some scenes, her hair, her Barbie hair was sticking out. And I'm thinking, where was the hairstylist? But obviously, if you think of it, they were shooting on the beach, weren't they? And um, you could you could see the the hype, the um, videos on YouTube behind the scenes that it was done in such a way that they didn't worry about her hair being blown out of place. So that's what I love about the movie is that Barbie does not look perfect in all of the scenes. But in the opening credits, the whole essence of the Barbie movie was that Barbie looks perfect. And you hear in her dialogue in the script where she said, I'm used to being stereotypical Barbie. I look perfect. And she was struggling with her identity when she was thinking of having to go in the human world and what she would face. So that was one of my favorite scenes as well. And when she throws a tantrum on the grass and she's lying down and that's before um, the monologue, you know, about how hard it is to be a woman. But when the um, America Ferrara was talking, her monologue, it was amazing. And so when you see Barbie lying down and she's struggling with challenges she's facing in the real world and coming back to Barbie land, it's so relatable to so many people on many different le levels. But the point is that she, Barbie didn't look perfect in all of the scenes and that's good. It makes it more relatable to people. Um, so I think also we'll talk about Ken in another podcast because Ken always looked very, very perfect. And I don't know whether he had like a prosthetic chin because his chin looked different. His jawline looked different as Ken, don't you think? The Ryan Gosling Ken in the Barbie movie. Anyway, so we're talking about beauty, hair and makeup, my Barbie body and face and hair and lashes, skin, makeup. And then I'm just touching on Ken's aesthetic here because Ken always looked perfect in the movie. It's great. Anyway, Ryan Gosling is the perfect Ken. So back to the hair and makeup, how I look like Barbie. You must also work from within to look like Barbie, in my opinion. Uh, we're coming up to 20 minutes. So I'll get to half an hour, then we'll just do chit chat about the gym. So stay tuned. We've got another 10 minutes before, or you can look before I talk about the gym workouts that I've been doing to get my Barbie body in shape for March. And I'm thinking of competing again. Okay, so let me move on to the, what we're going to look at. We've done the lashes. So now I just need to look at the skincare. Yeah, and the holistic um, things that I do. So the diet and the nutrition help me glow to be and look like Barbie. You can't just mask your face with procedures. You have to do it on a cellular level to be like Barbie. And I always say it's the personality of Barbie that shines through me to make me look like Barbie. Because when you're an actor, to get into character, you'll say something. Like I just saw the Graham Norton show with the actor. I can't remember his name that played Prince Charles. And he was saying, how do you get into character? So he does all of the facial positions and movements and the kind of speech of Prince Charles and two of his habits, which was touching his cuff or playing with his ring finger, this hand left with right or right with left and he said um he would utter one phrase to get into character straight away like bring it on it's called the 
the light, switching switching on the character. So I would, I know that in the past, uh, people haven't been familiar with the fact that I'm an actress, but I'm on the internet movie database and I'm an actor. So to be Barbie 24 seven, I just be myself because I re resonate Barbie from within. So what I would do, say I'm having a day where I'm not feeling great, I will always go into a quiet space in my head and trigger the Barbie character. So I would use a phrase like, I am Barbie, I am Barbie, I am Barbie. And then I'd become Barbie again. So sometimes you might be doing something and you just feel the, the character slipping away and I won't let that happen because I want to literally be Barbie 24 seven. Okay, so what I touched upon in the beginning of the podcast, which is now my next point is the aging in reverse subject. So everyone who is familiar with my, my journey as the human Barbie and now Margot Robbie Barbie look like, they're familiar with the fact that one of the things that I've constantly said, which is my authentic self is I'm aging in reverse. And as I get older, I'm looking younger. And I'm getting fitter. When you're younger, you get away with it. But when you're older, it's like, no, you've got to figure it out as you go along. So my Barbie body face and body journey has been, it's almost like 19, 20 years coming up to. Can you imagine when it hits the 20 years mark, it'll be 20 years of being Barbie, the headlines. Yeah. At the minute, it'll be, you know, I'm 53 and what it's like when I turn 50 and I will be doing this till I'm 80. Absolutely, darling. I'll be getting acting roles in my 50s, which is the, the ambition that I have, is my journey of anti-aging to be Barbie, but aging in reverse for anybody, whoever you are, and for anybody Sorry, I keep looking at the sky and these planes go to a certain position in the sky and they look like they're standing still. They must be turning or something. It's weird. Um, anyway, so anti-aging, I'm aging in reverse and I'll be doing this till I'm 80. So obviously as I age, I'll be an aging Barbie and that's okay too because who knows, there might be a Barbie movie where they're going to show Barbie aging because like, guess what, guys? In the Barbie movie, did Barbie age? No, she didn't. Let me just talk about that. Barbie did not age in the movie. And there's a reason for that, because dolls don't age. So at some point, somebody must have had the conversation like, do we show any aging of Barbie? But the timeline is literally days, isn't it? Is it a whole, it could even be a day. Is it just a day? No, it's not a day. It's probably a few days. Because if you look at the scenes and you break it down, it's a matter of several hours that Barbie and Ken are acting. So it's, you know what I mean? And um, by the end scene, time would have gone by, obviously. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, there's no aging in Barbie land. And that's one of the key sub kind of um, themes in the movie. So let's just look at that for a minute. I'm aging in reverse. As I age, I get to look more like Barbie because I'm working on my facial contours. I'm working on my bikini Barbie body and I'm doing the diet, the nutrition from within for skin cell renewal, like I said in my skincare podcast. And I'm also doing it for health reasons, for cardiovascular health. I do 10,000 steps a day when I'm active. If I'm in the studio today and I'm filming, I'll probably have a rest day. So I have one or two rest days a week, but most days I'm doing 10,000 steps. I'm on my feet or I'm just active. And then I'm training in the gym. So I'm aging in reverse on a cellular level, hopefully. When you are aging in reverse, People want to know, how can you do it? Well, you've got to be healthy and you've got to be fit. And you've got to also look after the aging, the gravity, which is pulling your facial contours down and the wrinkles. So I'm ironing up my face every year. But there comes a point where if you do the surgery, non-surgical, Botox, fillers, all of that, and the thread lift, it produces collagen um, from within. So after a while, you need less. The more you have, the less you do. And that's where I am in the anti-aging um, process or that's where I am in the anti-aging stages of my Barbie face because the more you do you don't want to overfill it so I'm now not having filler in my cheeks so much I might want to see it have a procedure on my cheeks on average I'm just doing less filler and I'm doing the PDO thread lift because it produces collagen and that's what I want to do and I'm doing my lips maybe once or twice a year probably once a year but it, it really depends as well because when you do filler, you don't want to overfill your face. And a lot of people are not going under the knife. They're doing the thread lifts, which is what I do. So I'm aging in reverse using those techniques uh, through cosmetic surgery to maintain my Barbie face. But at some point in my late 50s and 60s, I might have to go under the knife. 
I just did an interview for a magazine and I said, maybe I'll go onto the knife when I'm in my late 50s, early 60s, or I might do it sooner, who knows? So aging in reverse isn't just what you do to your face, surgically or non-surgically. It's how you have a lifestyle and how healthy it is. And I would say to people, your stress is aging you, definitely. So cut out the stress. Find a happy place, whether it's playing your video games in your man cave, if you're a bloke, or if it's going to the gym and you zone out and you're in the zone and no one can reach you, you've got headphones on, you're pumping iron, you're strength training, or you're doing cardio, or if it's going for a walk, hiking, or if it's driving your car through the countryside, or if it's walking along the beach, if you're lucky to live in, in Miami or Malibu, and you're, God, that's my dream one day. I want to go to Malibu Beach and just stay out there one day and film a show maybe stay there for three months of the year get a good contract and get to Malibu and just film I want to do that just like in the Barbie movie um, so whatever activity you're doing or non-activity if it's a sports thing like if you're playing video games you have your own happy place there's different ways of stress hitting the body, but if you've got high cortisol, you might even be resting, but the cortisol is still taking effect because w when you're stressed out, you are damaging your cells. You're not allowing your cells to renew and refresh to keep the aging process at bay. You can't fight the aging process, but you can definitely enhance what you've got. So basically, when you've got good skincare and you've got a good diet and training and fitness, that helps you with the aging process. So you're not fighting it. You're just enhancing nature, what you've got naturally, so that you can age at a slower rate. So there's a wonderful lady on. I'm just getting my notes out, guys. So please forgive me for looking down. Let me get my notes. So we're going to go into the skincare thing. Okay, so... I'll talk about anti-aging. So basically for me, one of the biggest secrets, which I'll talk about more in another podcast is collagen. So you've got hydrolyzed collagen peptides, which is the type one collagen that you want. Anti-aging experts say you've got to do nutrition. You can do the timing of your intermittent fasting to give your body a rest to heal the cells. You must take supplements, uh, including collagen types one to two, and you can have plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery and your skincare regime should be an integrative approach. So basically I've got lights here, so I can't see my screen unless I do that. So the Koreans have got like a 12 stage step skincare routine, but there's a doctor called Dr. Yoon. And he says, you don't have to do the 12 step. You just need like a one, two, three step. So he said that if you do a two minute routine for skincare in the morning and evening, that's all you need to do. So in the morning, um, it's going to be different because you're in a rush getting ready to go to work. So you just want to put a SPF on your moisturizer and then go and do your makeup, whatever. In the evening, you need to cleanse and you need to put things on your skin so that when you're sleeping, it, your skin cells renew and all of that. So, um, okay, so there's different types of collagen. I think type one and two is the, the, the key thing here. So you've got amino acids or peptides. Um, in collagen, which, and if you take a certain type of collagen, it allows that your gut to absorb the collagen better. There's a lady called Charlene and she interviewed Dr. Yoon, Dr. Anthony Yoon, and he said, take both type one and two collagen and study it, you know, so that you can know what, what the difference is. Uh, collagen is a large protein and there are around five types, but there are three main types which are important. And so you can go away and research that because I'm not going to make this a very scientific video. So one of the reasons why I mentioned the collagen is this, that the PDO threads, which is the non-surgical facelift that I have each year, they are PDO threads and they stimulate the fibroblasts, which are the collagen producing cells in your skin to make more collagen and more elastin fibers. And then you've got other things in there as well. So um, he talks about the matrix proteins in the skin that give the beneficial plump skin and texture. And the loss of these proteins as we age is what we're looking at. So aging is the loss of proteins in your skin. So you have to replace those uh, collagen proteins, collagen slash proteins, so that you can uh, plump out the skin and stop or reverse the signs of aging or slow down the aging process and repair the crepey skin and repair the wrinkles and prevent them. So you've got restoration, you've got prevention. So he said that you've got lax skin as well because gravity pulls the face down. So there's many reasons why I do the PDO threads, but it basically produces the collagen. And he recommends red light therapy as well. So energy-based uh, 
uh, red light therapy is good for the skin to produce collagen. And it's also really good for your neck to stimulate collagen. I've had the PTO threads in my neck and I've got these bands, but I do need a bit of upkeep on my neck and jawline. But I'm trying to train during January, February, March. And that's why I'm putting the gym training in this podcast now. We're on to the second half of the podcast, guys. We're going to talk about my gym workouts as we finish and taper off the skincare and the plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery subjects that we're integrating into today's podcast. So look at collagen and we can talk more specifically or more scientifically in another podcast. Leave something in the comments, guys. So let me know if you want me to go into it in, in more detail. Um, because I've got my notes here. You've got type one collagen is hair, skin and nails and bones. Type two are for the joints. Type three is for muscle. Type four and five is is not so important because it's for the kidneys or the placenta. So basically you want type one, two collagen that you want to focus on if you want to research the subject. Okay. And he said that if you want more bang for your buck, red light therapy is good if you are on a budget. My friend Steve's got a red light therapy lamp and it's huge and it's only 200 quid, but it's massive. And he, it does like head and shoulders and he does side, he does different profiles and he does all parts of his body. But I know there's, um, Dr. Stephanie Capel. She's got, um, a, full body red light mat that she lies on. Oh my God. It's amazing. But don't forget guys, research these subjects before you go away and do something. I'm not recommending it. It's just, um, I'm talking about it in my podcast. So he said nutrition, intermittent fasting is good because I'm on an intermittent fasting supplements, plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery, and skincare. They're the key things. Nutrition, the timing of your nutrition, intermittent fasting, supplements, plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery, anti-aging, and skincare. So the skincare is really, really important because she was talking about the mitochondria. And so red light transfers energy to the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cells and to produce more ATP energy, which helps you function which helps your cells function on a more youthful level. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing everything, so I'm not a doctor. So go away and look at these subjects. But that's the basic starting premise of what we're looking at. So he said, for example, type 1 collagen supplements won't help your joints because you've got specific collagen for specific parts of your face and body. So go for type 1 um, collagen and type 2. Type 2 is for the joints and type 1 collagen is for the hair, skin and nails and, and bones. I think I've got that right. And you've got another one, which is for the muscle. So basically, what you want more protein in your diet because it helps. Now, I remember that Charlene said that about the protein is good for anti-aging as well. So you really do need to research this because it gets very scientific. But when they were talking, they said the skin on the neck is thinner and it's the first part of your head and shoulders to show the signs of aging. When I was in Tenerife recently last year, recently I wish um I was I had my SPF on but I sat for an hour in the sun because I'm half Irish my skin just burned and I was like oh my god I've got one picture of my skin being burnt but I just I was okay it didn't hurt because I put loads of creams on it anyway so I felt like maybe I didn't burn so badly because my skin's in good condition and he said your skincare obviously at night you cleanse and then you moisturize some people use toner I just use cold water but I cleanse and then I'll put the retinol with the CeraVe moisturizer with hyaluronic acid and then SPF cream on top. There's niacinamide as well that I'm going to start talking about. But retinoids, so retinol is a non-prescription type of retinoids and retinoids are a derivative of vitamin A. Retinol is non-prescription strength and you apply moisturizer on top of that to hydrate the skin. So if you look at your skincare routine and Google retinol and retinoids and vitamin A and all of that, niacinamide, you'll get a good idea of what the top key components for a good skincare routine will be. And my skin's starting to look really good since I've been using the retinol. I've always used squalane like as for my hair and my skin and my lashes, and it helps my lashes grow. Disclaimer, don't follow any advice here because I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you what I do. Okay, so let's get back to the gym. So anti-aging for my body is healthy nutrition, supplements for the diet and gym training to produce muscle. Muscle mass, you're never going to grow muscles and look bulky. People go, I don't want to look bulky. I don't want to go to the gym. Strength training is good for your bones, density and mass, and it's good for your muscles and good to, for your core. So it's got to have a holistic a head to toe approach because you've got to know how to train the body in the gym to benefit and reap the rewards of growing a bit of muscle to strengthen your body. 
and support your tendons and all your ligaments and your core. So there's so many, I mean, honestly, as a bikini athlete, I had to study the hell out of this. And even now I've just touched the tip of the iceberg. So what I do, I go to the gym, I do strength training. I do three full body workouts a week. I'm going to be doing a five day split probably at the beginning of February because I started the gym training in mid December sort of early December, I was like tapering out the sugar and coffee and going cold turkey, getting the migraines, coming off the chocolate, blah, blah, blah. And then by the second week of December, I was starting training again at home, lifting, doing a 10 minute routine for my upper body, 10 minute for my glutes, just to activate the muscles. And I was so tired. Then I upped the ante and I'm doing a proper workout. I'll go to the gym now. New Year's Day, I went to the gym, started on the leg machine and I did a upper body mini workout and I did a lower body full workout. So I'll train my glutes, legs, hams, quads. Um, I'll train them twice a week, big workout. Uh, and don't forget the glutes is one of the biggest muscle areas of the body. And then I'll do my upper body. So I'll do shoulders twice a week because I'm growing them and biceps back and biceps once a week but the thing is you do compound moves in the gym so even though I might I'll make sure that I'm training my biceps and back like twice a week in the compound moves which are like a mini version of the workout of hitting the muscles or you isolate the muscles and hit them hard on a five-day split so the five-day split is to separate your muscle groups into two at a time and you usually do it over five days with two days rest over a seven-day period generally speaking that was a big mouthful so I'm doing three full body workouts a week hitting all the muscle groups and building muscle. So yesterday I started going heavy uh, with the biceps. And so if you go a little bit heavier, you've got to reduce the reps. And believe me, by this, I do normally I do 10 to I do 10 to 12 reps, which is moves and five sets and on one muscle group. So I'll do back and biceps and I'll do two moves for each muscle group. So uh, that's really hard. But if I go heavier, I'll manage six to eight reps and I'll maybe do four sets. Yesterday, I was working out my biceps at home with a heavier weight and I could only do eight reps. And by the second set, so after 16 of those, eight and eight, I was like, I've got to go lower again. So it's absolutely fine to mix it up a bit because you can't risk an injury definitely don't want to do that. If you have to go lower, just do more reps. So then I felt stronger and I just couldn't lift the weight. By my third and fourth and fifth set, I went back to the three kilogram weights, but I did more reps to failure, literally till my muscles were burning and I had to put the weights down. So also what Shalene said, I hope I'm pronouncing her word. She's lovely. She left a comment on my YouTube channel. Thank you. I love you too. Cause she's wonderful. She says to her followers, I love you. Don't forget. And she really does mean it. And I love that, but she's really good to look at because I think she's in her fifties or late forties, but she looks amazing for her age. And she talks about her fitness journey and how she used to overdo the cardio and now she's doing strength training. So the key to anti-aging, having my body body is to do strength training. That's what I'm on. I've been on it since the middle of December. So as I had over the first three months, which is the 12 week diet and nutrition and gym training program. By February, I'll definitely be lifting heavy in the gym. And already when I was training yeah, two days ago, doing my leg workout, I went very heavy. I was so blown away. I was like, oh my God, I'm doing 25 kilos each side instead of 20. So instead of doing 40 kg on the, the lying down leg press, which is harder for your hams. I'm doing 50 kilos. I know I'm 56. So I'm literally lifting just a little bit lower than my body weight. And that it, it, it really hurts, but it's good. And when you stand up, you like can't walk, don't walk. Definitely remember health and safety at the gym. When you're hitting those muscles, get up safely. Um, yeah, so I'm gradually increasing the weights just for the first two sets. And then eventually I'll do a whole five sets of heavier. Now, I think I might have to go down to four sets as I lift heavier and do eight reps of each. So if you're doing moderate weights or low weights, you do 12 reps, five sets, or I'll go a bit heavier and do eight reps of four sets, you see, because as I go heavier, you're encouraging the tissues to be under strain. So you produce more muscle. Does that make sense? But you have to obviously factor into your workouts, the fat loss, which I'm doing 10,000 steps on average. And then you've got fat loss, calorie controlled diet, or calorie restricted diet. But if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm craving a 
bar of chocolate, I'll have a wagon wheel and it's probably 176 calories or something with a bit of sugar, but I can go back to sleep because you know something, when you get older, your hormones play a factor in your diet as well. So if you're craving something, find an alternative to it. So I had this 20 grams of protein, chocolate, hazelnut, uh, mousse. Uh, you know, you can get those chocolate bars, which have got protein. They're okay, but they've still got the sugar. So I had a protein bar with no sugar or two grams of sugar instead of like 10 or 14. So you can have the protein bars, which are good, a good kind of treat if you get the munchies in the middle of the night. I just have a bag of salad and half a cucumber with either my egg protein with a couple of yolks or I'll have meatballs or a piece of chicken. So you go for four ounces of chicken, broccoli and rice. I'm doing no carbs. I'm only doing net carbs of salad in the evening, vegetables with the protein. And I'm doing more fat in the evening. I'm doing pure carb rice for my lunch to keep me burning throughout the day because uh, I do need carbs because I'm training. You need a certain level of carbs. When I was a bikini athlete, I think my coach put me on 250 grams of carbs over five meals. So you, you do your five meal prep and in each five containers, you've got your protein and your, your protein, carbs and fats. So I'd have four ounces of chicken, broccoli, a cup of broccoli and a, uh, a cup of rice. So you split the 250 divided by five, that kind of thing. At the minute I'm doing my lunch, which is the carbs and then the dinner. And then, so I'm doing my intermittent fasting where I don't eat until 1230. So I don't have my porridge and blueberries. I'll do my carbs, my lunch, 1230. Then I won't eat again until the evening. And then I'll have protein and fats and I'll have like a bag of nuts and raisins. So I'm getting the fructose sugar. And at some point, if I do decide to compete, I'll see how the first three months of my training go. But if I do decide to compete, I will be cutting out the fruit sugar as well. But right now I'm at the first stage of the bikini prep. So you have to listen to your body. You really can't just do this fad dieting because you'll just crash and then you'll come off the diet. You've got to do it steady. So um, I'm looking into protein treats that will give me a higher increased protein, which is what I need to do to grow muscle and reduce the sugar, which I'm doing really well. And then the carbs will form the sugar content as well because carbs will break down and store some of it, I think, as fat in the liver. But the sugar and the glu glucose kind of sugar levels, I've got to really watch them. So, so also when you're on the diet, you get like, not carb coma, but you get those moments where you can't think and that's the diet kicking in. I, I like that. But sometimes when you go to the gas station and you park your car, and you're like, why have I parked? I'm like, should I be getting gas? But you're like, no, you're going to get a bottle of water from the store. I'm like, oh, oh. or once I parked my car, filled my car up with petrol just before I was competing when I was 43. And I got back into the car without paying, started to drive off and I thought, oh my God, oh my God. So I was like one week out or a few days out from, from competing on stage and your brain goes to mush. And I waved to the guy because luckily my local... Um, gas station the guys are really friendly they kind of recognize me and know me and I was like sorry I, I was about to drive away I'm competing my brain's gone to mush and the queue of people is like yeah whatever but yeah that's a, so when you're doing the diet your brain goes to mush so watch out for that um, and if if your sleep is interrupted because you're waking craving something usually for me it's hormonal I know it is so rather than laying there awake or tossing and turning because my body's saying I want some sugar I want some sugar I'll just go and have a bite of this wagon wheel or a bite of my protein bar or some handful of fruit and nuts and they'll go back to sleep. Trigger alert, one day I decided I had nuts in my teeth. It was middle of the night, probably one or two in the morning. I'd woken up craving something and then I decided to chew some gum to clean my teeth and I fell asleep with the chewing gum in my mouth. I woke up and I was like, oh my God, don't do that guys. Do not do that. Not good. So, and I'll clean my teeth in the morning. But yeah, you've got to listen to your body as you go along because you get as you get older, it's really hard when the hormones change and they play a part of what you want to eat and what you don't want to eat and all of that. So now if I eat sugar, my body's rejecting it. I don't think that's hormonal re uh, related, but my body's like, I want to throw up if I have too much sugar, which is good. Anyway, I've got to write down my diet, do my protein macros for February and start the macros, protein, carbs and fats. But right now I'm easing myself into the diet and easing myself into controlled macros. That'll be for February and definitely March. We'll see how it goes, guys. But I'm on the, oh my God, my Bobby body fitness and training gym program. 
and it's going good and I'm really happy. And yes, I'm a lot warmer now, but I've still got my coat here, my little fluffy Barbie coat, because it's still cold outside, but it's blue sky. As I'm filming the podcast and looking at the blue sky, seeing the planes in the background and looking at the beautiful sun. It's so gorgeous, the winter sunshine that we have in the UK. I love it. I don't mind a bit of cold. It was a bit of snow yesterday here in London, but it didn't settle. But I know it did settle in Essex. So my friends in Essex had snow. Lucky. I don't particularly like the snow. I'm just glad the rain's gone. Anyway, guys, so for example, if it's raining and it's dark, because it's not going to get light until end of February, but we are getting slowly more clearer skies in January, February, which is good and less rain. If you see that rain and it's dark and ominous and you think, I'm not going out in that weather, do your training at home, guys. That's what I do. Get some weights and just do it on the spot. Watch a TV program, do anything, but just get lifting. Strength training is so easy to do and to incorporate and introduce into your daily lifestyle. So I recommend strength training for all ages and don't worry about the trends like grow a big booty. Grow what what muscle is appropriate for your body shape, you know. Don't compare your body to other people. You will, it's normal. But just remember it's your body. Just start lifting weights, strength training, go easy. Look at YouTube. I recommend Shalene, the Shalene show. She's got a podcast and she says you can screenshot these workouts and I've just watched it on YouTube. I'll probably pop the information in the next podcast because I'm going to go into my gym training routine and then what other people are doing like Charlene she's amazing she's a big inspiration she left a comment on my YouTube it was lovely she's so sweet and she's gorgeous she's blonde beautiful and she's just she said I like to do my own makeup in the morning I film and then I go to the gym in the middle of the day because she talks about in her podcast that she used to go to the gym in the morning and after a while it was just a lot because she's an entrepreneur running a business doing the podcast and she said it's a, a product So when I'm producing my own content, I'm a producer of my content. It's a production. This doesn't just happen, guys. Um, And writing, I'll sit on the train when I go into London to meetings and I'll do this. I'll do all my notes, literally on train journeys. That's when I do my best writing. That's how I wrote my song Party Time, which is available on iTunes and Apple iTunes and wherever you get your music and Spotify. So I'd write lyrics on the train on a post-it note and then I just, that's it, boom done. (laughs) Most of the time I don't edit the podcast. I just do it as is because I've researched and I'm doing it off the cuff from memory. I've got a photographic memory. So you guys can feel I'm just hanging out with you. Hopefully you're listening to the podcast when you're walking, doing your hiking, or if you're in the gym, you're watching it on the video. So guys, thank you for listening to the parody podcast show hosted by me, Rachel Evans, aka the human Barbie and Barbie lookalike. And I love you loads. I'll see you in the next podcast, guys. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Bye, guys.